I've modeled and textured a girl and now I want to do the best render that I can. This is how I do that. Hey, I'm Jay and welcome to another video in this series where I'm just taking this girl model and moving it along, doing different workflows, making tutorial videos to share with you on how I do some of the CG art things that I do. So some of the things that I do is occasionally I want to do the best, highest quality render that I know how to do right now. I've done that on projects like the Cyberpunk Girl, the Orc, and Steve Jobs. So when I wanna make the best, highest quality CG render I can, I use Arnold. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Even if you don't use Maya or Arnold, you might learn some things in this video in terms of like overview and techniques. Also, just if you're curious on how I make some of the art that I make, Maybe this video is for you, but we're definitely gonna get in there and start sharing some touchy little technical details when it comes to making cool stuff with Arnold. I love Maya and Arnold for making these kinds of renders and images because X-Gen hair is the best, I think. I mean, it's an industry standard. Arnold is a great physical renderer. You really just put a light in anything and it's gonna look amazing. The only downside here is that it takes a long time to render. It takes some time to set some things up and you have to learn some nodes, but that's what this video is about. I'm gonna show you the whole process and we're gonna end up with a cool render at the end. So, so far you saw I did a render of this girl in Marmoset and at the end we can see a comparison of what it looks like in Marmoset versus Arnold. Huge difference in time. These final renders I did took like six hours to render. I did them overnight. So huge difference in time, but what you get with that is the tiny little bounce, physical, nice, mm, mwah, mwah. So not every project needs to have this like level, you know, of rendering and detail, but sometimes you want to do some detail. So let's talk about that. And for those of you that are super into this stuff, like this video we're about to see is taken from a real time demo I did for my Patreon, along with the grooming video, the peach fuzz. There's lots of little things that I've been doing and uploading to Patreon. So thank you for your support if you're a Patreon member. And if you're really into this sort of stuff and you wanna learn more and dive even deeper, consider checking out my Patreon. This tutorial video is brought to you by Squarespace. A little bit more about that later on in the video. So now let's just dive into Maya and start making our scene to render our character. Here we go, we're in Maya right now. So you can see like as we left off, what I have in Maya right now is the model and the hair that we did in previous videos. So I'll probably just turn off the hair for now. I got rid of all the lights in the scene. So we're gonna start from the ground up here and we're gonna turn this into a nice looking scene for this character. And I'll tell you a little bit like why I would do certain things. So maybe right out the gate, we'll just open our render settings show you this is uh, something that's pretty fast. Maybe we'll do even faster out the gate. We'll start here in terms of samples. That's the only thing we'll change here. Then let's go ahead and create a material for our head. So let's open up our Hypershade. Come in here and go create Arnold shader surfaces, AI standard surface. This is what we want. You use it for everything. And we're gonna use it for the skin in this case. All right, so why don't we just go ahead and name this AI skin. There we go, we got our skin. All right, so we have our material now, uh, just default. I'll select the mesh and I'll right click this little A symbol right here and assign it, boom. Now we have this AI standard surface applied to our character mesh. All right, so now in terms of lighting, how I'll start off is I'll create a sky dome. That's an HDRI, that's an image-based lighting. We're gonna start with that and then we'll go from there. So we'll go Arnold lights. We have to create Arnold lights right here for it to work with Arnold. That's what we're rendering with. So we'll choose sky dome light. There we go. And here's our sky dome, cool. If I hit control A, come over to the attributes. There we go, sky dome light. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in our texture into the color. So why don't we do that? We'll click here, it'll make a file texture node. Then I'm going to select it. And I'm gonna look through my HDRIs I got here. I'm gonna use one from HDRI Haven. And we're gonna use Kyra 3 Morning 2K. This is what it looks like. Somewhat basic, just have something here that has a sky and a floor. You could use studio lighting. You could use an HDRI from like a neon city. I mean, the options are limitless. This is gonna create the environment that she's in for right now. Now she's in it. Now you can see here the color space was set to raw. That's correct. This is automatically set to do that in my scene settings probably. So just make sure when you're using an HDRI that you have raw. The format should be lat long for these. So that's correct. We're gonna set the samples of all of our lights to two. If the samples are too low on your lights, you'll get some noise. You know, that's one of the things about Arnold you have to pay attention to is you saw me in the beginning change the amount of samples for the camera and like diffuse and spec. Lights have their own samples too. So I've found that two is kind of a good minimum and anything higher than that 
it's probably diminishing returns. So I have a camera here, made a little render cam. Why don't we pop into it? You can see here, I have this. I like to use this field chart. It's not even that perfect. So why don't we try to get it perfect? Ah, nice and perfect, right? Some things about this camera. If we look over here, focal length, I have at 85. I like that. It's a good portrait lens. Normally when I'm doing character presentations, I try to avoid what we're doing here, like a super flat on shot. I try to make it a little bit more dynamic, imbue some kind of life in my character characters but just because we're doing this demo I'm keeping it pretty flat on and I think there's gonna be something somewhat striking about this kind of you know perfectly flat thing I don't tend to do this and this could end up making your character look kind of lifeless or like a 3d model and that's not normally what I'm going after but for the circumstances of this demo of her just with her eyes closed and everything I think this is gonna be fine it'll show everything off and at the end we could always load up multiple camera angles so maybe I'll get something cooler. But right now, this is the plan. I'm going to do the straight on portrait and then we'll have light kind of come around from the side. So it'll look a little bit more dramatic than usual. Okay, so that's kind of it. Just focal length 85. I got it set up looking right at her and I've got these gates. So there you go. So now we actually don't need to be in this camera even. We can pop out. I'll open up my render view here. We can get there by going to Arnold open render view. And I just docked that render view right here. I'll turn on my render cam sometimes this bugs out and you just have to reselect it so let's see what we get so i'm just going to do a render real quick before i do that i'm going to save which i'm going to do throughout here because i don't want to have to do anything uh twice all right so let's hit our first test render and see what we get in case you're wondering why it's super slow when you first hit it it's making um dot tx files so for big files right now it's probably the hdri there you go you saw it just do that it made a TX file on my disk, so now it's gonna be faster to load, but it has to do that the first time. So here we go. This is it, done, right? Ship it? No, probably not. So yeah, right now we have this you know, standard surface, which is glossy and white, and the position is not great. So why don't we first adjust the position of our background here? Can do that in Maya by middle mouse clicking and dragging. So now I'm just gonna position this. Probably want it to be just kind of straight on. I know I said I don't want it to be boring, but this is just gonna be a fill light. You'll see what I mean in a second, so. Maybe something a little bit off might be good. All right, so there we go. So we're just gonna change this. So we made this an AI standard surface. We go over here to the AI skin, right? We can drop this a bit, increase the roughness. So you can see she's really bright, right? But that's okay. Now we're gonna make it more curated. So I would never, for what I do, I would probably never just use an HDRI. But if you were like matching a plate, if you were doing an animation, you could capture an HDRI like in your actual environment when you shoot a scene. And then you could drive the whole thing with an HDRI. But typically, even on movie sets, right? They're not just going out there with a camera and having actors run around. They've got lights. So you would have to either recreate that, capture that in an HDRI image texture that you're using. Or in our case, we're going to actually position lights and we're going to curate this. So... This HDRI image, it's gonna become less and less the main source of the light, and it's just gonna lift the overall ambience. So why don't we add our first real light here? So we'll go Arnold, lights, area light. Area light's definitely the one to make. So why don't we just make our big light? So I'm just gonna do a big kind of key light. I'm gonna do a portrait lighting setup. Obviously we have a portrait setup here in terms of the composition. So now I'm gonna do it similar to how a photographer might do it, how I'm gonna do it, is I'm gonna have this big soft key light, and then I'm gonna have these two rim lights around her wrapping light, and we'll have a very dark background so it should really like pop off and look striking. That'll be our first setup. So to make lights soft, just like the real world, it means that it must be large. So we're making this fairly large here. And then I'm also gonna do something a little bit more interesting here. I'm gonna change this shape to a disc. So now it's like uh, we have a light box, you know, like an aperture light dome. And uh, there it is pointing right at her. Might make it just a little bit off center just so it's not perfect. Or maybe I'll uh, rotate it down so we can see once it has a shadow. So now I'm going to rebalance the scene out now that I have this key light, right? So I'm going to change the exposure. I know for this scale, 16 should be all right. So now she's getting blown out, right? But if I jump over here to the sky dome, I can drop that intensity. And now we're starting to balance it out a little bit. So if I were to turn this intensity totally off, now we just have the key light. So we can dial that in. Uh, in terms of position, you can see the soft shadows. This is from the size of the light. This might be a good example too of the noise. So here we go, samples is at one. So now I just changed the samples of the light itself to two, and we made that a little bit cleaner. 
Let's talk a little bit about Squarespace. So Squarespace, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a easy to use web builder and it's something I'm using right now to make my website. What's cool about Squarespace is it's just so easy to use and there's a lot of really buff things you can do. You know, I've tried other things before and um, I just don't have time. Who has time? And nowadays, like for a reasonable price, you can make a really pro looking website. I'm in the process now of moving all my stuff over to a Squarespace website. You can see it's pretty easy to do even custom things and make it nice and clean looking. They have a ton of templates to start. So whether you're like making your own personal portfolio website or making like a little side business, you can do things like book appointments or even do things like make a member area. Squarespace offers all that stuff and you can really make a website all of your own with your own branding. So if you're interested in that, you can head to squarespace.com right now and check it all out and start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, be sure to go to squarespace.com slash jhill and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now back to rendering. Now, I think we might even want to get a little bit more dramatic with the shadows. You know what I mean? Like, if you go like this, this is, ooh, this is like Godfather. Like, maybe that's too much, you know? Don't want it to look too evil. But I think I definitely want to get, like, the underside of the plane of the nose shadowed up here. I think that's good for now. We can get a lot more interesting with the HRI. So now what I'm getting here is these sharp shadows, and I don't like that. So I'm going to see if I can just use a studio and see what happens there. So if I were to go to studio and use my Tomoko here, this one comes with Substance Painter and I always use this. So I'm gonna change this up and see if I like this better. Essentially changing her environment from outside. The sun, the sun makes extremely sharp shadows because it's this pin light kind of that's super bright. And you saw that with our studio light, we made it very large. The sun is a small point that's really bright. So it makes sharp shadows. So I'm gonna see if I can just use this to fill. There we go, that looks interesting too, and it has a bit of color, a bit of fill. Cool, so we'll leave that. I like this better, so we're gonna use this now instead. Now we're making an actual studio setup. I made a layer here, I'll delete this layer so I can show you. So I have this HDRI selected, I'm gonna create a layer from selected. I'll name this HDRI layer, and then I'm gonna set this to reference that means I can't select it here in the viewport, which is good because sometimes I box select, you know, and I don't need that right there. So here we go. We're cooking here. We already got something that's pretty appealing, even though, you know, we're not after a, a marble sculpture, but I think she looks pretty cool. So why don't we bring back our hair that we made in the previous videos? We can see what that looks like in this environment. Okay, there we go. We can replace the background with whatever we want. Uh, in my case, most likely it'll just be black but right now what I'm feeling is we have a nice soft key light which is good that's what we're after but now this is why I want to start adding like rim lights to really like wrap light around her make it just feel more dramatic more like kind of a fashion-y shoot and then really pop her off the background and do some interesting stuff with the hair here so I'm going to stop this and then we're gonna add a couple more lights so let's come over here I'll go Arnold lights Area light, we'll make a new area light. Put it back here, we'll scale it up. You can see this little uh, line is telling you the direction. So I'm gonna get it around her at kind of an angle here. Make it a little bit big. Sometimes rim lights are smaller. Remember what I said about sharp shadows. Sometimes you can do a rim light that's a lot hotter and sharper to contrast the big soft key. Also, as you scale lights up, their intensity will seem uh, dimmer. So like if you have a very small light at five exposure, it can be very bright. And then that same exposure at a large light will be dimmer. Now it's like spreading it out. So right now I'm going to do something that's not exactly small, but not exactly big. I have this coming at an angle to her and it's pointed down a little bit. Cause I want to get the top of her hair too. All right. So let's check this out. Uh, samples will do two. Let's set the exposure to 16 again. And here we go, you can see how bright it is. If I move it far away, it just spreads a little bit more up here, the back of her neck and her shoulder and stuff. So I'll just do like a mid distance for right now. Cool, so now we got the back of her hair too, like the top of her hair and then like her shoulder and everything. Cool, why don't we just render this little section right here, see what we get. Since we got the hair in the scene too, it's gonna go a little bit slower. Why don't I just drop this camera samples down so we can see what's going on while we're just blocking things out. There you go, so it's really lighting up the hair now. Maybe too bright, I don't know. I can always change that later, but in terms of position, 
and the idea, I like it. It's definitely popping her out now. A lot more dynamic than when we had before. So I'm gonna name this AI backlight one. I'm gonna name our key light AI key light. And then with AI backlight one, I'm just gonna duplicate it, move it on over here, and then have a little opposite action. Cool. So now let's see what we got. There we go, moved it down so we get there a little pop more. Cool. Kinda want like her cheek, there we go. I was looking like right here, I wanna see the light wrapping around the edge of her face, cool. So this already, I think, looks more dramatic, more appealing. Um, this light wrapping that's really bright. And we can even dim that key light if we want to. We'll see once we have things in there. But this is what we'll leave it at for now. So now that we have the lights set up, we've got the scene, basic scene set up. Now I'm going to bring in our texture maps that we made in the other video. And we're going to start making a skin shader. All right, let's open up our hyper shade. Here we go. We've got our skin shader. I'll just make this nice and skinny so we can get in here. All right, cool. Don't need this. So here's our skin shader. Now I'm gonna grab our texture maps. So here are our maps. There's a base color map, normal map, which I exported from ZBrush. And then we have this roughness map and then this spec map, which has just a bit of noise. So this is the uh, base color map, right? We made these in Substance Painter in the skin texturing video. I'll drag those in right here, boink. So here they are. The only different map uh, is I didn't export a displacement map before when we were doing it in Marmoset, but now that we're in Arnold, I for sure export a displacement map. That's this right here. So I exported this from ZBrush using the multi-map exporter, and I made sure to export it at 32 bits and an EXR. So this, and at 8K. So this is a huge map, a lot of data in here, and this is really gonna help our model look high quality, high end in the render. We'll get to that more when we talk about displacement maps, but that's how I made this map. I exported it from ZBrush using the multi-map exporter. And these other maps we made in the other video. So let's start with the base color. In our case, we're actually gonna plug the base color into subsurface color. So over here in our AI skin material, you actually don't even need the base weight because we're just gonna do 100% subsurface. You know, we are making a skin material. Skin is subsurface. And this is how we're gonna get this. This is actually a really cool setup. Uh, sometimes I get people asking me questions that kind of relate to like an older school way of doing it. Always depends on your renderer, always depends on how the materials are set up. But with Arnold, it's really nice because you just plug the color into subsurface. So for the subsurface radius, if I click here, we make it a color instead of a value. So it's not just a value. And if I set to RGB with just values right here, this is the values Arnold recommends in their documentation. So I'll set it right now. It's one for red. It's always gonna be one for red. And then we're gonna go 0.35 for green. And we're gonna go 0.2 for blue. Now, a way to think about this is these values are representing how far the light waves are going. So red is going the farthest, it's maxed out at one and then green is going less far and blue is going the least far. So this is actually telling the light to spread at different depths and it's using our base color map as the color map. So the old school way of doing it would be to make like multiple like dermis and subdermis map and people were like color correcting them and all that stuff. You know, sometimes they would even paint different things. But this way you just choose this color and then you have it on random walk. We change the scale. In my case, it's 0.1. My scene is in centimeters and my head is about realistic size as reference. Mine's 0.1 in this case. But yeah, but now with just the color plugged in the subsurface color and the radius set to the skin flesh tone kind of thing, we're gonna get a nice believable look. Uh, and that's it. We don't have to do anything else. The only thing you would tweak is scale, depending on like how waxy you want it to be. So you could shine a light through the ear and you could dial it in that way. You make sure that the nose isn't too waxy, things like that. For the type, here's a little odd one is a uh, random walk, really good. This was added to Blender recently. This is the new Unreal Path Trace rendering uses random walk. It's really good. Arnold added random walk V2. I don't know if it's made for skin, but I like it more. So we're adding, we're doing that. That's what I like. When I read the documentation, it says random walk V2 is better for like thin things and they show like, you know, like a little resin piece like a toy or something. So maybe it's not physically correct for skin. I don't know, but I like it. I think it looks better. So, so I'm using it. Cool. So there you go. Now we got subsurface. Some other things before we do another test render. Specular. We know this is going to be skin. So we're going to set the IOR to skin, which is 1.4. 
there's already a preset for that. For roughness, we'll just leave this for right now that we just eyeballed it. So why don't we do another test render now and see where we're at. All right, here we go. So super noisy because of our um, render settings. And also when you're using a subsurface uh, material, we're gonna get a lot more noise and color noise because not only does the samples of everything need to come up, it's gonna need like more diffuse and transmission samples and stuff like that. So skin's almost always gonna look more noisy and uh, you'll have to raise it up. But I think in terms of the light spreading and everything, this feels okay. Another indication I usually look at is the corner of the lids. I know it's noisy as hell right now and, and hard to see. So let's add a few more maps. Then we'll up the samples and we'll start rendering little windows to really see what's going on. But in terms of like the color and the balance, I'm pretty happy so far. So let's continue. Right now it's obviously smooth. We haven't added our details yet. So before we go any further, I should say this is one of the quirks of using Arnold and Maya today. And that is all of these file texture nodes that you're looking at right now, we'll need to be sure a couple things are set correctly for each one. So far we did base color and that's the most straightforward. Pretty much default's gonna work for you 100% of the time. These are the things to look out for. If I click roughness, I'll show you. So color space, sRGB, that's not correct for everything. It is correct for base color. Now all these maps were made in linear space. I don't wanna go down this rabbit hole. I'm not even, it's confusing to me even, um, but they were, the source is linear space. When it's exported, it's converted to sRGB, base color is. So that means color space needs to be sRGB when it's brought in, okay? For roughness, not the case. For roughness, it's gonna be raw. So you'll go to utility and set raw, that's the color space. That's gonna be the color space for things with data, you know, like the displacement map, for instance. If I go to the displacement map, you'll see Maya actually defaults EXRs to raw because EXRs are full of data. So they know they're like, oh, an EXR, yeah. But a PNG, so maybe if you use something else, it doesn't happen in your scene. But because mine's a PNG, I have to make sure that my thing is set to raw. The other thing, when it comes to roughness and spec, like black and white maps, we're gonna be using the out alpha, not the out color, okay? We're gonna use the out alpha, which is the black and white uh, part, right? And then, so we need to check alpha is luminance. There you go. So those are the two things. What color space is it? And is it black and white? If so, alpha is luminance. Okay, so now we can go of the roughness, we can go out alpha, specular roughness, boom. Now at any point with these file textures, if you click here and you look at the file texture attributes in here, there's a color balance section. So we can raise the exposure, we can change the gain and stuff, but we'll just see like out of the gate what we get. I'll also up the samples a bit so we can see a little bit better. So why don't we just do like the nose? Okay, not bad. It's not too glossy, it's not too matte. I think we're good. And we have that detail that we painted. Again, we can change the exposure, we can change the color balance later when we wanna fine tune. But right now we're not off base yet, this is good. So we'll continue on. Okay, now we'll do spec, let's drag this up here. And now for spec, what we wanna do is make sure it's on raw. Alpha is luminance, out alpha. And now actually we're gonna connect this to specular weight. Right now that's specular right here. So if I go out alpha specular, that's right here, specular weight. So now what this is doing, I'll show you. So if I hit render and then I hit isolate, it takes a second because it's making a p-text map. If I hit isolate and then I show you the spec, here's the spec map. So you remember when we made our skin textures, uh, you don't need a spec map for most things. Honestly, you can get away with things like props and stuff like that. But what we did is we just added more noise. We just added more detaily noise. Uh, and that's why I'm adding it here. We're gonna layer that up. Just like when we were making the textures, we were like, hey, let's just add a bunch of subtle, it's all about subtle variation, subtle contrast in color, shape, value, all that stuff. And then it's gonna create this complex organic look. We're continuing that theme on now. We're gonna add all these maps and you'll see like as we add like little bits of noise and the skin detail along with the noisiness in the spec map, the contrast and the, the difference in the roughness map, it's gonna create this holistic thing that feels organic. So we're gonna try to use this spec map in that way. Again, you don't need a spec map. It's just another way for me to add more noise, okay? All right, so now that's making it a lot dimmer so I can up the exposure. There we go. So now I'm getting that value a bit back where I was before. I wanted to set the 1.5 for now. All right, now let's do a normal map. We made a normal map in the last videos. That's the whole thing we used in the Marmoset tool bag renders. For Marmoset, that's obviously enough. In here, I'm gonna show you how I do a normal map setup, 
But in Arnold, I don't normally do normal maps because Arnold is not really like about that. Sometimes I do if I'm using like texture sets that I get from Substance Source or some kind of online library and you get a set. But I'm gonna show you now what it looks like and how I do a setup. I still can't get the AI normal map node to work. So if you know how to do that, let me know in the comments below. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I can't ever get it to work, but I can't get this to work. So I'm gonna do a 2D bump node. Again, what's weird about this is these are Maya nodes now. And again, this can be a little bit weird. I know we covered it in another video, but I'm gonna go over it again. So normal map, I have to make sure that the color space is raw. You might not think that. And then I have to make sure alpha is luminance is on because here's a weird one. We're gonna go out alpha to bump value. And then we're gonna change this to tangent space normals. And then I actually have to flip the green channel in mine. This depends on how you made your textures and substance. When you first start substance, you choose whether or not it's DirectX or OpenGL. It might be worth noting that like Unreal, Marmoset and Arnold are not all in the same green direction. So it's nice you got little toggles here. So if it looks wrong, try, try the toggle, okay? And now we're gonna do out normal, normal camera. So now I'm going to, I'm gonna up this. Obviously this is gonna take a long time, but I'm gonna render this now so we can see the details. So I'm gonna go 200 just so we can see a little macro here. Okay, here is our big render with the normal map. You can see kind of some stuff going on, a little bit, kind of in the spec, right? So I'll save this and then let's add our displacement map now and we can kind of flip flop the difference and talk about the benefits over here in displacement map here's our nice big fat exr so what we need to do is we need to create a displacement shader to go between the out alpha goes to displacement and the displacement goes to the displacement shader of our shading engine that we have applied which is this one right here something to take note of in the displacement shader scalar zero value right here. This needs to correspond to how you baked or got your displacement map. If your displacement map looks gray, that means your scalar value is 0.5. You can imagine it, right? Like 0.5 middle gray, and then white is up and black is down. Ours is zero because that's how I baked it from ZBrush. And later on, you'll see why I did that, but it doesn't really matter the difference. And like when you open it, it looks black, but actually there's so much data in an EXR, it can go down and up. You just can't visually see it on the screen. So it doesn't matter. And it just makes it easier for me to mix nodes later because I can add to black. Scalar zero value, make sure you set that right and make sure your displacement map is on raw and alpha is luminance also has to be checked. So there we go. Here's the big other half of this. So we set up the displacement map in the shader now. Now we need to set it up in the actual mesh. So if I click my mesh, in my mesh shape attributes, you might have to dig around, but it's right here. And then in the girl mesh shape under subdivision, I set it to Cat Clark. We'll leave it at two iterations right now. That means it's gonna subdivide twice. This is gonna subdivide once and then twice. So it's gonna look like that. And we can go even more if we want to, but right now we'll leave it there. And then for auto bump, we wanna enable auto bump. So what's gonna happen now? It's gonna subdivide it. The displacement map is gonna move the verts and then the difference is gonna be a bump map. So it's gonna move these verts and then things that are so tiny, it's gonna be a bump map. So the illusion is really, really good. It looks like it's super high poly. So we should be set up and ready to go. I saved my fancy schnoz here. And now I'm gonna render it again, this time with the displacement shader. So now it's gonna have to make a PTEX map of this big old EXR. So this might take a second, but let's see what it looks like with the displacement map. Now we'll compare. All right, render's done. Let's save this now. And then let's flip back and forth. Here we go. So we see a little bit of a difference. You can see it looks more intense, that's for sure. But also if you take note, we can see this in other areas too, but if you really take note here, this looks flat to me and fake, and this looks like real, like the light is actually going in there because it is, that's what's really cool. And there's even a feature in here, if we go to advanced, it says use auto bump in subsurface scattering. Now when you click this, it takes a really long time, but this makes, look at that, it says triples the shader evaluations. So we're not gonna click that, but if you wanna do it for your final render, you can. 
and then it even like uses that auto bump that difference in the SSS which is pretty cool it still looks great without it so yeah that's the difference and this is just in this area the displacement map is actually moving the geo so the whole model is going to look like a little bit more irregular and organic and not like a normal map is like all the detail on something that's smooth so it's obviously the best and I actually like that the way it looks when it's combined you know together so I'm just going to leave it like this, but displace map, definitely the way to go. And when you're doing your final render, you can even subdivide it more times. Like right now we're just doing two, but you could do three or four. Okay. Now I don't think we need this big old render anymore. Why don't I go back to a hundred and then we'll just go to five for now. So now why don't we do this area? We're going to let this render. I'll show you what it looks like right now. And then we're going to talk about a cool feature of the shader called coat and that's going to let us put like a top layer a second specular lobe that's going to make our skin look even better so here is our base skin as it is right now got some noise in here but that's okay what we're going to do now is add a coat layer again coat lets you do two specular lobes you could fake a lot of things like that in our case we want a tighter highlight on top of this broader highlight and we'll balance it the goal being that it looks like skin oiliness or sweat or something so we want that T-zone of the face. We want the lips to be really glossy as if there's a top layer. And what we're going to get is these two lobes, like I'm saying, right? We're going to get this broader one and a tighter one on top. Makes it look a lot more complex. Makes it look more organic. It's a really cool feature. So we're just going to use our same roughness map that we already made. And we'll get a little tricky with it. So with this roughness map, we'll plug it into coat. And then we're done. No, not really. What we're going to do is we're going to put something in between it. You can do this a number of different ways. Right now, we're going to like remap our roughness map to do what we want for coat. Uh, you can, again, you can do a bunch of different ways. I'm going to do an AI ramp float. So you see what we get that is, is a ramp and it's black and white. So we're going to go out alpha to input. We're going to go out value to coat. Okay, so now if I were to render this, which, is, oh, there we go. So here's our roughness map. Now you can see because it's a roughness map, that means the glossy areas are dark, right? So the tip of the nose, what we want to be really glossy is dark. So we actually want the inverse of that because what we're doing now is we're using this roughness map that we put all of our hard work, our pain, sweat, and tears, our manual labor to make this roughness map. And we want to use it to drive our coat, our glossy little layer, right? So I'm going to invert this and then I'm going to crunch it. I just want a mask of where this is gonna go. So if we go over here, we can change the type to custom. And there you go, we got the same roughness map, right? And now we'll open up our little uh, graph so you can see it bigger. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna lift this part up. We're gonna drop this part down. And now we've got the inverse. Cool, are we done? No, we wanna crunch this, dude. Bam! So now what we have is like a mask, right? Because white is revealing this glossy layer. So we can even leave a little bit of it if we want, like we want to be a little cheeky, you know what I mean? So it's got like a little bit on everything. This should be pretty good. Let's see. And then for the actual coat settings, what do we want to do? We'll open a coat. So that's our weight. IOR, maybe we want it to be like water, a little bit different. Roughness, where we want it to be very low. 0.1, maybe 0.1 is okay, actually. So roughness is so low here, like zero would be a mirror. So let's let this render and then we'll take a look and compare to before we had coat. Okay, we're back. Uh, so here, our render's done. We'll save this and we'll compare. There you go. So subtle difference, right? But I think it's nice and I think that really helps to make it look more like skin. And we're gonna get this effect on the lips and everything. All right, well, I'm gonna let this go and let's see, let's see where our render is at so far. All right, here we are. This is where we're at so far. And uh, overall, liking it, we could probably balance these lights. But another thing that's cool is we can save this out as an EXR and it's gonna have so much data. Like we can play with those values in the final render. And so we're not actually losing data. Like the stuff that looks like it's clipping isn't even clipping. But in terms of the skin and the overall like aesthetic, I think we're headed in the right track. Let's raise the stakes. Let's make it a little bit more complicated, a little bit more detail here. What I wanna do is I'm gonna add some noise. I'm gonna show you how we can mix that with our displacement map. So our displacement map has all those little pores that we did. We exported this huge map and now we're gonna mix it. So let's jump over to the material graph and I'll show you what I mean. We'll actually just position the camera too to like really show you this. We'll change this to the perspective shape. I'll save this. All right, there we go. I'll render this, okay. Cool, so here is our close up right now. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add some stuff. So let's go AI cell noise. That's gonna be our jam. 
For the pattern, we're gonna use alligator. I think this is cool. It looks very organic. I'll show you right now. Let's go out color red to displacement. And I'm just doing this so I can isolate. So you see it's like a organic pattern, right? It's me cool. So we're gonna make this really small. Amplitude, that's fine. We're gonna drop that. We're actually gonna use amplitude for our displacement scale, like our noise scale. So the actual scale, we need to make it tiny, tiny, tiny. So we could do something like this, maybe even smaller, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, maybe 30, I mean, let's, I mean, let's go, you know? Okay, amplitude, I already did a test, so I know 0 .003, you can't even see it. I'll go a little stronger, just so you can see it. I'll show you what this looks like, just the noise. All right, here you can see it. Looks pretty cool, right? Pretty organic, and uh, I'm not even mad at the strength, to be honest with you, if we looked before, right? So this is what we sculpted, and this is just pure noise. Now we're gonna mix these together. That's where the magic happens. I'm gonna lower this a smidge. I'm gonna go 0 0.004, and now we're gonna add these together. So we're gonna do that with an AI composite node. AI composite. Just like your friendly neighborhood compositing software. Normally, your displacement map, you're using your out alpha, right? That's where all the data is. And sometimes these nodes don't all have alpha and it can get confusing. So we're just going to use the red channel as our kind of pipes, as our throughway here. So for cell noise, we're going red to red. And then for the displacement map that we baked out, we're going to go alpha to the A red. So now all the black and white data is in the two red channels. And then for the out color, the out red is going. All right, does that make sense? So now everything's going and we're going A red, B red, and out red. All right, so we're using that as our through line because we're not using color maps. So we don't need all that stuff, but because it doesn't have alpha, that's how we're doing it. So in the AI composite node, what do we want? We want it to be plus. We want it to be A plus B. Now, Let's do a render and check out our handiwork. All right, here we are. If I flip back and forth, you can see the main forms are still what we sculpted, but bam, look at all this sharp detail now, wow. So it's really the mixing of these two things that creates this super, I mean, here we go, we got pores, we got the cellular pattern, right? And that's what really brings this super high fidelity look. And you can see we're leaning into kind of the randomness. Like it's not hand placed, all this tiny stuff, but the mixture of hand placed sharp detail with this, something that's infinitely sharp. The fact that we're using a procedural and we're tiling it. So it's very, very small is creating that chatter, that naturalistic cellular pattern. That's very, very small on skin and organic things. You can see we get this like nice contrast of soft and sharp this way. It breaks up the light. So this is really key in making things look, you know, super high quality, like photorealistic materials. So we'll back back out of this shot here. We'll go back to our normal one. We'll render this. So here, I'll just render this face right here and we can take a look. As this renders, right, if we pull up our older one, again, a lot of noise here, right? But you have to just see how the shine is getting less sharp. So it's actually because we're adding this to the displacement, I mean, obviously most of it is gonna be in the auto bump, but it's using that in its calculation and it is actually moving the surface. And anyways, the net result here is that it's increasing the roughness. You sometimes you have to dial back your roughness and your coat and things like that. If, if you want something very shiny and you start adding a noise like this, that's what roughness is, is actual tiny microscopic noise. So like by adding it, you are increasing the roughness somewhat. So just keep that in mind. But overall, I still think it looks like skin, it is dulled a little bit, but I'm not too upset about it. And I can always increase the coat uh, to compensate. So that's one of the last pieces of the puzzle here. So now we have this fine detail, right? We've got our skin shader set up. We've got the lights. Now let's talk a moment about like plussing this and moving it even farther. First thing that we can do is we can make a new custom map to mask out this tiny noise on the lips. In my case, I want I want to keep these lips nice and glossy, right? But the noise that we made is just scattered over everything, including the lips. So I want to mask that out. I also want to add some custom eye makeup here. Do some cool fancy things with the materials there. I want some glitter eye makeup. I want it to be like really bold and pop. And I can show you starting to layer materials that way. Now to do these things, I have to create custom masks. So let's talk about making custom masks. We'll jump over here into Substance Painter. This should be familiar to you. This scene is from the skin texturing video where we made all these things. And now inside of here, I can make my new custom mask. So why don't we do that now? So I'm just creating a fill layer. Gonna make a black mask and then 
So let's do symmetry. I'm gonna add a paint layer to my black mask and I'm just gonna paint out the lips, okay? Easy peasy. There we go. Now, maybe you don't wanna use like the flow. Maybe you don't want it to be uh, as hard. So you can fade it like this. I press X on the keyboard. Okay, we're gonna fade it out. And you see what I'm doing now is making a pretty simple mask, right? And then we can figure out how to turn this into a custom mask. If I wanted to turn this, this is just a fill layer with a paint layer now, right? I kind of visualize it this way. So now what I need to do is we need to talk about exporting this map out. Now like the ghetto way could be like you just make this black and white and then export out the base color again, but that's not the best way. What we really wanna do is add a new channel. You can see these are the channels we have now, so we can add a user channel. So let's just add user zero. So our user zero uh, comes in at L32F. We don't need that. We can just make that L8, like these other black and white ones, because we're just making a black and white map, which I think means 8-bit, but you know, I'm not a doctor. All right, so that's user zero. Now what we'd have to do is make sure that this is user zero. So like if we were to come over to, we'll just visualize the color right now. If we were to come over to user zero, that's nothing, right? So here I can just go lips mask. All right, so why am I making a folder? Because if I put this in here and I just make it user zero one. All right, so there we go. We got, we got it, right? Are we done? No, we're not done. A couple things. One, when you see this checker pattern, that means that it's empty, right? In substance, it means that there's no data there. Substance exports it out as white, unfortunately. So you might not want that. In our case, funny enough, it does work that way. Like if I make it user zero black, this will come out correct. So we could leave it like that actually, make it simpler. So maybe I'll do that. So we'll just take it out of this folder and we'll just call it, we'll just call the fill layer lips mask. Okay, so now actually exporting this user zero channel will get us what we want in terms of the lips. It'll just have a black area painted on the lips. I think uh, it would even be nice to kind of subtly get rid of it on like the bowl of the ear and stuff. Again, are we gonna render the ear? No, but here is our micro mask because that's what it is. All right, so we saved that. Now let's talk about doing eyeshadow so i want to do a funky crazy glittery colorful eyeshadow to do that why don't we keep it simple i know it's going to be multiple things so i'm going to make a folder called eyeshadow i'll make a fill layer in there and then i'll make a black mask on the folder now so now i'm going to reveal some of this color right so let's do that i'll even visualize it because i know i'm going to make something that's blue and metallic so i'll just do those material parameters on this fill layer right now so we can visualize and we can start painting in the shape now of the makeup so what's cool about painting masks uh, once you have this set up is you're just painting black and white so if you're painting pure white or pure black you can hit x on the keyboard to flip back and forth so i have pressure sensitivity clicked on the upper left you can see that means the opacity of my stroke is tied to how hard i'm pressing on the pen and so i can just fade this in real nice i want to make sure that i'm fading out the edges so that there's a transition and that it's nice and opaque around the actual eyelid. Once my blue is laid in, I'm gonna add another fill layer now, this time for black. We're gonna do multiple colors. This black's gonna kind of serve as the eyeliner. So I'm gonna make a shape that's more sharp and I'm gonna do it around the edge of the eyelid, make kind of like this cat eye shape on the outside. So doing something a little bit more unique, adding another fill layer now, and this time the color is gonna be this sort of fuchsia hot pink. I wanted to do something different. I did some reference hunting around before I did this and I found some unique makeup styles that I thought were cool and striking and this will just play off the blue really well and the overall scene I'm kind of envisioning. So I thought it'd be something cool to add so I'm adding this fuchsia on the inside near her tear duct. So now we're gonna have a folder with these three different colors. Now we need to make our mask. Just like we made our lip mask, we're gonna have to make a new channel, but now we need to export a custom mask for the makeup as well. Trickier setup, right? We've got this folder for the eyeshadow. Got the multiple colors here. So we're gonna add another channel. This one's gonna be our new uh, mask. Let's make that L8. I'm just gonna put a fill layer at the bottom and we'll do user one. This is normally what I do. I just put a base layer at the bottom of my scene and uh, any kind of custom stuff, I can just set the defaults. Because remember, when we're on user one, it's all checker mapped, that means it's white. That's not what you want sometimes, but in this case, it should be okay. User one, nothing, but we made it uh, in the fill layer. So you can see now it's actually calculating all the junk above it because it's at the bottom. But there you go, finally got there. So now we have black to start with. And now in here, we have the folder. We actually made the mask in the folder, right? So if I add a fill layer here and just go user one white, 
there you go. And actually now I can see that like this is um, not as opaque as I thought it would be. So there we go. Yes. Material view. Let's open our export settings. We have this as our output template. Let's go to that output template. Okay, we're gonna duplicate this and we're just gonna name this girl custom, okay? So now we're making a completely new output template yeah, just for this project. So it comes out this texture set, all that stuff. I don't need all this, but that's okay. So now I need to add a couple more. I need just like this, right? I need like metalness and like roughness. I need a gray. So we're gonna do that one and I need, I actually need two grays. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it there, paste it there. So this is micro mask. Usually with masks, you know, you can just do that. So it's obvious what it is. And then this one, we're gonna make it the eyes. So we'll say, I'll just call it eye mask. For the micro mask, we need to come find our channel here. There it is, user zero, drop that in there and we'll say gray channel. And then user one in here, we'll go gray channel, boom, boom, boom. So now we've got that girl custom. We'll come back over here and we'll say for the global settings, we'll do girl custom. So it's going to the right directory here. So now I can come in here and actually say what I want. Uh, I want it to be base color and I want it to be these two, perfect. So I'll save these. I'll do something a little bit different here. I'm gonna change the name of the texture set and I'm just gonna call it girl masks for now. So why I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna export the color map too, and I don't want it to be just on the skin actually. Uh, I want it to be its own color map. There we go. So now I don't have to worry about like the skin bleeding through or whatever. Like I'm just using this for the color, you know? So there we go. So now uh, if I come over to the export settings and I say list my exports, what's it gonna be? There you go, micro mask, eye mask, good. List of exports, it's gonna be girl masks, base color, girl masks, eye mask, girl masks, micro mask, perfect. So I'm gonna hit export. There we go, we got three maps. So we just made some custom maps. Now let's go back over to Maya. All right, now we're back in Maya, let's drag those in. So here's our material graph, drag these in, ba bam So I'm gonna render this, we'll do before and after. All right, cool, so I saved this, here we go. Now, first thing, I'll use my lip mask and I'll get rid of the noise. Now to do that, let me grab that micro mask, bring it down here. So remember when I said we set the scalar value to zero, that means I can add black and that will mean no displacement. And this composite is plus. So black would be zero, right? So the displacement I made and baked from ZBrush plus zero is the displacement I made from ZBrush. Make sense? I guess all you need to know is it's gonna work, but that's why it works. Is because the way we set it up, we're gonna be able to combine the cell noise right here and I could do that in another composite node. Yeah, why not? AI composites and we'll go out R is the original. I guess we'll just do this. We'll go raw alpha is luminance out alpha to that. We'll set it to multiply. So now we're multiplying it. That means that it's gonna be black. All right, and then this now this out R is what goes into there. Boom, boom, boom. So we'll render these lips and see what we get. So it's where it was before. Boop. Noisy. I mean, it's noisy, obviously, you can't even tell. But, you know, you can see it's getting, it's getting glossy, right? So that worked. We're good. Now let's add some fancy makeup. We're going to get super fancy right now. She's going to get fancy. We're going to get fancy. We're going to add a layer, AI layer shader. Boom. So now this is gonna be our new shader. We just made a new shader. So this is gonna be called AI head because we got more things going on now. And then this skin, we're gonna have this go to this one. So we'll open it up. I guess we can name these if we wanna be all cool. And then we'll enable another one and we'll call it makeup. So for the input, what is that one gonna be? It's gonna be this one. There you go. So the layer one is our AI skin material. We're actually gonna stack materials now and use the mask that we made. So for layer two, we need to make a new material now. We're making more materials, we're layering materials now. So this is gonna be called AI, oh, I guess eyeshadow. So we'll come back over to our AI head, input, boom, eyeshadow, all right? So we don't need these shading groups, I'm just gonna hide them right now. Now, important thing to realize, we're gonna, all that whole skin shader that we made before we're rendering right now, we're gonna, we're, we're taking that out. We're making a new shader 
and we're we're plugging that in and we're gonna stack right so something you might notice now is we got two shading engines now I'm gonna apply this one so I'm gonna choose the girl right click our new material assign it so now the girl has this AI head material now so that means this is the new shading engine that's assigned so the displacement needs to go there so I'm just gonna hide this one too instead of delete them our new eyeshadow we're gonna plug our color in there we'll even make it metallic why not so that we can really see the difference so now we've got this eyeshadow material cooking we've got the one we've been making so how are we gonna layer them up well it's on layer two right so now what about the mix the mix is this it's the mask we made so there you go good out alpha is being used good that's what we want but remember we have to make sure it's raw not srgb and alpha is luminance and then alpha is what's being plugged in so that's correct now let's make a little window right here how's it going over here it's gonna have to make some ptex maps again Gonna have to load some stuff because we changed a whole bunch of things and we added some new things. Bam. So the layer shader works. Now, I think a couple things. I think our eyeshadow metalness, I don't know if it needs to be that much. Okay, and then uh, let's make it even spicier. We're gonna add AI flakes. What? Flakes. This is, this is used for car paint but you can use it for makeup. I used it in my cyberpunk girl. That's what I want to do to her. I want to make it like real glammy and we can like change all kinds of stuff about her. So like we've already started making the materials. We set up the scene and now my mindset goes to like punching it up, adding more things, trying to make her feel like a unique individual person or character, you know, make something dramatic that showcases that so that it really pops off and it makes it something like more unique and special and not just, you know, just like a girl. So for me, I like this kind of glam makeup. We could do like a darker vibe, a darker scene. All right, so we're gonna use AI Flakes now. This is how we're gonna do it. Jump over to the node. I already know some stuff that's gonna work for my model. So I'm gonna make it really small. Density, we're gonna go all the way up. I want all the flakes. I want all the flakes. Normal randomize, if you lower normal randomize, it makes the highlight tighter. We wanna sparkle it out a little bit because I'm trying to make glittery sparkles, you know? So the thing to know about this little guy is that you need to go out color to normal camera. A Little bit odd, but there you go. And then so this is what we had before and then we'll render it now. You can see the difference it made already and also just me lowering the uh, metalness a little bit. Again, we can dial all this stuff in. It's like important to keep track of these few attributes that make a big difference in your material definition because it's those tweaking, it's that balance. And you, you don't wanna just get lost in the weeds. You also don't wanna change like more than one or two things. It's because you can see how it takes so much longer than doing real-time rendering. You don't get that immediate feedback. And so if you're gonna do a little test that takes like a minute or two, and then it comes out and you don't like it and you change like three or four things, it's hard to keep track of what contributed to it not looking how you want, you know? So you just incremental, you know, take your time. Here we go, we got some flakes. Check that out. So we're gonna do a couple more things here. So I'm liking it, we got something going here. We got some nice fancy makeup. So now what I wanna do, I'm gonna tweak her hair material. Let me get that hair material in here. So this is my old hair material we got set up. I'm gonna do something a little bit different here. What I'm gonna do is flip this around and add some color. So if we open up the original ramp that we made the way this works is that it's driving the melanin and i want to make pink tips so i need to use melanin and base color so i'm going to rearrange the melanin so that it gets lighter towards the bottom and then i'm going to make a new ramp that has a color so i can make the really light parts pink and then i'll leave the roots kind of a dirty blonde brown here so now we've got a completely new look just by adjusting a material we made before now i got a model of her clothes boom bring that in it just Martha stewarded you right now. So here you can see the model. I made this in ZBrush, just kind of extracting the, like duplicating the body mesh. And then these, I just did the normal painting and mass extracting. Made sure I laid it out in a strip. And then uh, this texture I got from Substance Source. And I just tiled it on there. Used an alpha and I have like a strap shirt on underneath. Visibility and camera will have that be zero for our sky dome light. And then that'll make it black. Now I'll come over here and then let's make this nice. Let's make this like, yeah, 8333, sure. I mean, let's not forget the peach fuzz. Yeah, I added peach fuzz. I made this peach fuzz the other night and I actually recorded it for the Patreon. So if you, uh, you know, are into nerdy stuff like making peach fuzz for your characters, check out the Patreon. 
To finish, I added a few more models. I created these unique models for her nose ring, three different kinds of necklaces, including this unique choker with a heart pendant. I did this tattoo choker. So there's a contrast in colors and materials. I actually used the Arnold material presets for gold and plastic for these. I added a few loops to her ear, along with a diamond stud for her nose. I used the diamond material preset for that. I added these things to make her feel a lot more like a unique character and less kind of generic. And I also made an alternate version of this scene. So what we did up till now is we created a kind of neutral studio lighting environment, which is great to do, but there's a million things you can do. So I created an alternate version that's a lot more dark and colorful, like maybe she's in a nightclub or something, something that fits the look of her to create kind of a storied image. So to do that, I duplicated all my lights, I put it in another group, and then I changed the light shape, I changed the light color and intensities in some places, moved them around. So now I have these two completely different lighting setups that I can toggle their visibility with just a keyframe, so I can render both these things overnight. When my final scene was ready, I made sure I had enough samples, I hit render, and then several hours later, this is what we got. And that is how I use Arnold to render this girl and how you can too. So thank you so much for watching up to this point. If you made it to this point, you're a super nerd. I appreciate you. Super nerd power. I'm going to make a playlist for just like CG character art workflows where videos like this can live for the series that we've been doing so far. If I do make another video, it'll probably be rendering this character in Unreal. I get people ask me questions about that. So I think I might be able to do something there. I also want to do other videos besides tutorials um, and mix things up. So let me know if you want to see anything specific. And if you want to see that Unreal video, drop a comment below. Thank you very much. Go make some cool stuff.